What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, and today I'm back with another brand new hero concept, this time for the Vishkar official and Talon Inner Council member, Sanjay Corporal, a barrier tank equipped with a prototype hard light manipulator and state-of-the-art regenerative body armor, Sanjay is more than capable of building a better world both from behind a desk and in the field of battle. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. To start, let's quickly cover what we know about Sanjay as a character in the Overwatch universe. First and foremost, he's a high-ranking official within the Vishkar Corporation and, possibly among other things, handles negotiations with other business and government entities in an effort to forward his corporation's goal of building a better world. While initially coming across as diplomatic, we've seen that he's more than willing and capable of playing dirty to get what he wants. He might best be described as a clinical pragmatist, someone who's emotionally disconnected from his actions so long as they get the job done. If this in and of itself wasn't a troubling enough philosophy, we see that he's also deeply involved with Talon, to the point where he's even on their inner council. Exactly how far his connections go is unclear, but his position heavily implies that Vishkar as a corporation is operating at least partially under the influence of Talon's dark agenda. Agenda. While this is unfortunately the extent of canon information we have about Sanjay, I've taken the liberty of expanding his character a little bit in order to better fit with his role as a playable hero. The following is my own speculative description of him. In addition to being a negotiator in more formal situations with other corporate executives, Sanjay's diplomatic skills often place him in the field handling unruly opposition. Not everyone agrees with Vishkar's invasive redevelopments, so it's his job to deal with riots and uprising when things get out of hand. Vishkar's suppressive sonic technologies may be an effective first line of defense, but sometimes it takes a little more force to maintain order. Thus, Sanjay is prepared to lead anti-resistance security forces in defense of their corporation. Real quickly before I delve into his kit, I would like to mention that if you enjoy this video, then be sure to leave a like and share it with a friend, as both of those really help my channel to keep putting out content. Now getting on to his in-game details, Sanjay is a tank hero equipped with regenerative body armor. The design I'm using for him in this video comes from Half-Life 2's Combine Elites, whose white semi-futuristic body armor accurately represents how I envision him appearing in-game. The bulk of the armor makes him roughly the same size as Zarya, thus making the two tied as being the smallest tank heroes in Overwatch. Furthermore, I've given him the same amount of hit points, being 200 health and 200 shields. However, unlike Zarya, Sanjay is designed to fill the role of a main tank, which I'll elaborate more on when I get to his abilities. First though, let's cover his weapon, the Light Manipulation Device, or LMD for short. A more advanced version of Symmetra's Photon Projector, this prototype is designed to let anyone utilize the full potential of hard light technology. While traditional hard light weaving takes years of intense study and training to be able to produce even the most basic of geometric shapes, the LMD could revolutionize what Vishkar's architects are capable of. But for now, it's still being field tested. While designed primarily for construction purposes, it's still more than capable of dealing damage. The LMD's primary fire shoots condensed hard light shards in rapid succession at Sanjay's enemies. This is very similar to Sombra's machine pistol, where it has a high rate of fire and ammo capacity, but low accuracy and range, with only moderate damage output. The primary fire deals up to 7 damage per bullet with a 15 RPS rate of fire, thus having a maximum DPS of 105. However, given the weapon's widespread angle and short falloff range, it'll only really be effective at close range. For comparison, the two closest weapons to this are Sombra's and Wrecking Ball's primary fires, which you can see have similar effectiveness in most categories. While the LMD's primary fire isn't particularly strong or unique, it still offers reasonable damage potential for close range engagements. Moving on to the LMD's alternate fire, this is where Sanjay gets a little more range and variety. Alternate firing causes the weapon to charge up a condensed ball of hard light shards, which then gets launched out in an arc. This is similar to charging up Symmetra's alternate fire, but with the arcing projectile behavior of Zarya's weapon. Upon making contact with any kind of non-player object, the projectile sticks to wherever it lands before exploding into hard light shrapnel after a short delay. This shrapnel deals damage in rapid segments, exactly like Ana's biotic rifle. If the lobbed projectile makes direct 
direct contact with an enemy player or barrier, then it explodes immediately without any delay. The projectile deals up to 80 damage in 4 even ticks over 1 second, depending on how close the enemy is to it, with an explosion radius of 3 meters. Unlike similar forms of damage, the explosion does not inflict any knockback on enemies and won't hurt Sanjay if he's caught in the blast. Also, unlike Symmetra, who can partially charge her projectiles, Sanjay has to wait the full 1 second to launch his grenade, with a 0.5 second delay afterwards before he can start to charge another one or use his primary fire. Furthermore, once making contact with the terrain or an object, the projectile will wait 1 second before exploding. While the damage and range of Sanjay's alternate fire may feel a bit strong in comparison to similar abilities like Zarya's alt fire, the delayed explosion and slower firing speed should compensate and make this fire mode better for zoning enemies rather than dealing direct damage. Moving on to his activated abilities, this is where we reach Sanjay's main selling point. His first ability is Dynamic Barrier. Sanjay projects a field between two designated points, which can be used as either a conventional barrier that blocks enemy fire, or as a bridge slash ramp for crossing gaps and reaching higher elevations. There's a lot to explain regarding this particular ability, so to help clarify things, let me start by showing you the mechanic I've based it on, which is the coincidentally named Hard Light Bridges from Portal 2. What you're looking at here is a test chamber I specifically designed in Portal 2 to show off more or less how the Dynamic Barrier ability would work in Overwatch. Its first function is to block enemy fire, exactly how we see existing barriers work in game already. Alternatively though, it can be deployed horizontally to allow you and your team to cross gaps in the map terrain, and even be angled upwards to give your team access to high ground which may otherwise be inaccessible without special movement abilities. While this has been a basic demonstration of Dynamic Barrier's utility, now let's delve into its semantics to understand exactly how this ability is balanced for Overwatch. And in order to do that, we're going to have to switch over to Gary's mod. When the ability is first activated, you will see a hologram appear on the map to designate where your barrier will be constructed. Just like May's Ice Wall, pressing the ability button again will switch its configuration. Vertical is barrier mode, and horizontal is bridge mode. Each mode is different in its exact mechanics and how it's deployed, so let's start with the barrier mode since this will feel more familiar. When deploying in barrier mode, you will see a vertical blueprint on the map which automatically connects to map surfaces in much the same way as Symmetra's teleporter. Your crosshair will line up with the center point of the blueprint, and the lines above and below it designate the height of the barrier upon completion so you can see exactly what it'll cover. Once you place the first blueprint, a second will now appear that's connected to the first. This is the other side of the barrier and defines the exact field which the barrier will span. It should be noted that when in barrier mode, dynamic barrier can only be deployed vertically and with the two anchor points at the exact same elevation. Once the first edge is deployed, the second will automatically snap to that same y-axis level and the player will only be able to adjust the x and z axis to however they see fit. The only other restrictions are that both edges are within range of each other and the center points have direct line of sight. The barrier itself can clip through terrain and map objects, but the center points must have line of sight with each other upon construction. Additionally, only this center point needs to be connecting to the terrain. The lines extending above and below it can be either freestanding or clipping into the map. Because of this, the dynamic barrier can technically be deployed on flat floors and ceilings as well, although at the cost of losing half the barrier into the terrain. When in barrier mode, it behaves identically to other barriers in Overwatch, blocking enemy fire, but not physical movement for either team. Shifting now to bridge mode, this is where the ability gets a bit more interesting. Placing the bridge is very similar to placing the barrier, except this time you aren't restricted on the y-axis. It does, however, still have the restrictions of both edge center points needing to be within line of sight of each other upon deployment, as well as the finite range, but on top of that, it also has the restriction where you cannot place the bridge at an angle greater than 45 degrees. I added this to prevent the player from accidentally placing ramps which are too steep to walk on. While this does eliminate the potential for using 90 degree bridges as barriers, I felt that it was a necessary simplification to make the bridge mode's intended purpose as a mobility tool more intuitive while also reducing the potential for malicious shenanigans. As for the mechanics of Dynamic Barrier's bridge mode, it functions identically to standard barriers when it comes to weapon fire. Allies can shoot through it, enemies cannot. Furthermore, enemy players cannot physically interact with it, so to them it once again 
works exactly like a standard barrier. This is to prevent enemies from utilizing the ramps and bridges your team has constructed, as well as preventing the Sanjay player from using it in annoying ways that physically trap enemies. As for your own team's movement, this is where the ability differs. Obviously, if it's going to work as a bridge or ramp, your team needs to actually be able to stand on it. However, once again, in order to prevent it from being abused by trolls, allies can toggle whether or not they physically interact with the bridge by using the interact button when close to and facing the construct. By default, it behaves like a solid object for them, but by interacting with it, they'll then pass through the field like they would a standard barrier. Performing this interaction only applies to that specific player, meaning that some allies can drop through it while others remain on top. There are a couple other details I want to specify about this ability, however, let's first touch on dynamic barriers numbers. The barrier itself has 700 health regardless of which mode it's deployed in, it has a constant width of 4 meters, which is roughly the same size as Reinhardt and Arisa's barriers, but can stretch up to 15 meters in length. This is to allow it to adequately reach across gaps and up to high ground positioning. Also, each anchor point can be deployed up to 20 meters away from Sanjay. Another big thing to point out is that I've given the ability two charges, which can be stored up in the same way as Junkrat's concussion mines. You can still only have one construct up at a time, but multiple charges offers more room for utilizing its dual capabilities. For example, when pushing the first point of Temple of Anubis, you may want to use your barrier as a ramp to move your team up to this high ground, and then quickly erect a wall covering the far side to give your team protection as you fire at the defenders on the point. With only one charge available, you would need to reposition and then wait for the ability to go off cooldown to get any barrier protection, but by being able to store up two charges, it gives more room for strategic team play while also helping to compensate for the situational limitations of the ability due to it requiring map terrain in order to construct. Dynamic Barrier will deactivate after 15 seconds unless it first loses all its health or Sanjay replaces it elsewhere. This means that it's much like Orisa's Barrier, where the cooldown is shorter than its duration and thus allows for potentially infinite uptime. However, with only 700 health, the barrier is only slightly stronger than Winston's bubble, so Sanjay players will have to make good use of Dynamic Barrier's two charges in order to maintain the same level of protection provided by other barrier tanks. Now, there's just a couple more things I would like to clarify before we move on to the rest of Sanjay's abilities. Dynamic Barrier can be connected to payloads, as well as other movable or destructible map terrain. However, if these objects move or break while the ability is connecting to them, the barrier will automatically be destroyed. And since I'm sure many of you realize the potential for troll Sanjays to intentionally replace their barrier while their team is trying to cross a chasm, sadly I couldn't come up with a viable method to fully eliminate this risk, but to help reduce accidental casualties, existing bridges will emit both visual and audio cues when Sanjay goes to redeploy dynamic barrier and is in the blueprint placement phase. It'll also do this shortly prior to it naturally disappearing after 15 seconds. Okay, now that we're done with dynamic barrier, let's move on to his second and much simpler ability, rapid recharge. When activated, Sanjay's shield health automatically begins regenerating at double the normal rate, even if he's actively taking damage. There's really not much to show for this one, it's basically just a bit of self-sustain for when enemies bypass his barrier. It's similar to the regeneration Mercy gets during her ultimate in that it isn't delayed by Sanjay taking damage, but also doubles the default shield regen rate from 30 HPS to 60. That's still quite a bit lower than most damage sources you're likely to encounter, but is designed to help offset damage taken as opposed to completely negating it. Think of it like Orisa's Fortify. By regenerating shields while taking damage, it results in the player taking less damage over the course of the engagement. Also, since it only affects his shield health, it can't be used to regenerate lost normal health, meaning it doesn't have much use outside of direct combat. Its short duration and fairly long cooldown make it an ability you'll want to use sparingly, and overall shouldn't have a huge impact. Moving on to his ultimate now, this is where things get exciting once again. Sanjay's ult is Suppression Field. He erects a lamp-like structure which uses sonic technology to admit high-frequency sound waves that suppress the enemy's ability to fight. All enemies within its AoE become disarmed, meaning they cannot use their primary weapons. Once again, this ability requires a bit of explanation, so let's delve into the details. When activated, Sanjay will see a blueprint for where he's going to build the suppression field emitter, just like Dynamic Barrier 
or Symmetra's teleporter. The device is then constructed and creates an AoE ring around itself. Any enemies who are within this ring and have line of sight to the head of the emitter will be unable to use their primary fire and, in some cases, alternate fire as well. I'll come back to the exact conditions for that in a second. The construct stands roughly the same height as Baptiste's immortality field drone, but is connected to the ground with this long pole. As I'm sure many of you have recognized, this is partially inspired by the early version of Baptiste's ability prior to them redesigning it from a pole into a freestanding drone. The disarmed status effect is essentially the opposite of Sombra's hack. Disarm prevents the player from using their primary weapon, but still allows them to use their ultimate and abilities. Depending on the hero, this could affect both their primary and alternate fires. Whether or not a hero's alt fire is disabled as well depends on whether it has a cooldown or not. For example, McCree's Fan the Hammer and Baptiste's Healing Grenades would be disabled, but Soldier's Helix Rockets and Lucio's Soundwave would not. Because of this, the ultimate is more effective against certain heroes over others. Weapon-based heroes like Ash and McCree would be more negatively affected by it than ability-based heroes like Doomfist and Wrecking Ball. Furthermore, enemies are only disarmed while within the emitter's AoE, meaning that by leaving the ring, they can immediately fire their weapons again. Suppression Field has 150 health and 100 shields, for a total health pool of 250. It can be deployed up to 20 meters away from Sanjay and has an AoE of 25 meters for disarming enemies. This is quite large and fully covered most control points, but there is quite a bit of room for counterplay, which I'll get onto in a second. It takes 0.5 seconds for the device to start suppressing after Sanjay places it, and lasts for 10 seconds or until it's destroyed. While the ability may seem strong, there is plenty of room for counterplay by the enemy. For example, snipers would be able to easily take care of it from a distance if it's out in the open, and if the enemy can find a position where the map blocks the emitter's head, but not the entirety of the pole, then they can freely damage it from there without being disarmed. Additionally, since it doesn't block damage abilities, many heroes will be able to easily destroy it even without their primary fire. All of this plays into the ability requiring strategic use, as the right positioning and synergy with Sanjay's dynamic barrier can lead to a successful push or defense. Deploying it haphazardly will likely result in it being destroyed without having much effect on anything. Overall, Sanjay is designed to be a unique barrier main tank who offers multiple new mechanics to the game. I foresee him as being more situational than heroes like Reinhardt, mainly due to dynamic barrier being dependent on map terrain in order to be utilized in different ways. However, I think he'd introduce a unique playstyle to help diversify the main tank role, while also hopefully adding some fun potential for well-coordinated teams. On top of that, his story connections to both Talon and Vishkar offers loads of potential for expanding what we know about the Overwatch world, and thus could prove to be a critical player in the grand scheme of things. He He's certainly been one of my favorite new hero candidates for quite a while at this point, so I'm glad that I've finally been able to finish my concept for what I imagine he might look like as a playable hero in-game. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, let me know your thoughts on my Sanjay hero concept by leaving a comment down below, and once again be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and share it with a friend if you really liked it, as both of those really help out both me and my channel. You can check out my previous concepts for heroes like Demon and the Junker Queen by hitting the cards on screen, and other Otherwise, be sure to subscribe, hit up the bell, and follow me on Twitter to never miss any of my future Overwatch content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.